Hello my lovely friends. Welcome to my channel Creative Art. I am Nilima and today we are going to make this beautiful lotus and lotus leaf. At the first glance itself friends, you can notice how realistic and beautiful this lotus and its leaf look. This time I have given my best try to make it look as realistic as it can and you can make it easily at home without using any baking or any kind of special tools. So this complete beautiful art piece is handmade and you can easily make it at home using air dry clay. To give it some extra realistic look and a beautiful shine, I have also given a layer of clear resin on it so that you can place this beautiful art piece anywhere as you like. You can use it as home decor, place it as tabletop center, use it to place an incense stick holder in the center of lotus and also place a few beautiful flowers and candles on this leaf or else you can also place your daily use jewelry or watch in the leaf so that you will find it on time on the right place. So friends, please do make it yourself by watching the complete video and do subscribe my channel friends for more creative art painting videos and do press the bell icon to get notifications for each video I post every week. All the materials needed to make this beautiful lotus art piece are mentioned in the description box below with their links from where you can also buy them. They are also shown in the video. So let's start the video now friends. To make this a lotus and lotus leaf, you are just going to need few simple things. First is the fevicryl molded which is the air dried clay. The most important thing to make a clay lotus. MR fevicol which is the most commonly available glue. Fevicryl acrylic colors. Paint brush. A plastic round plate. You can select any size according to your lotus and expo art resin. So this is one of the thing which will make your art look glossy, give it a glass look and make it permanent. Using it is a not a compulsion but if you do want to give your art pieces a longer life, make it waterproof and give it a glass look, definitely you should use a art resin. So let's start now friends. Now first let's start from making the lotus and for that we are going to mix the resin and hardener part in equal quantities. In one packet of Shilpakar clay you get two different types of mixture. The first one is the resin base which looks like this and the second one is the hardener which is this part. So you have to open the packets, you'll get these two different colors of clay. So you have to measure them equally, size them equally in this way and then using a palette knife or any knife, you have to cut them both in two equal parts. In equal parts. So this is the part I'm going to use. And this one I will be keeping aside. At a time friends, you have to just mix a small proportion of this clay. As soon as you mix this clay, you will just get one color and your molding duration will start which is 90 minutes. So now I'm going to mix this clay properly. So this is how the clay will look when the resin and hardener parts get mixed up completely. So now, first of all, roll it. Roll it long. Okay. So this should be the length of a petal. Cut equal sizes. Okay, so now we have got four cylindrical shapes. So this is what you have to do. Take a lot of talcum powder in your base in this way. Place the cylindrical piece of clay in this way. Tap, tap, tap. Take some talcum powder in your fingers and start pressing the clay in this way. You have to shape this clay in the shape of a lotus petal. So keeping that in mind, start flatting the clay from the side in this way. You can also use a leaf cutter if you have a leaf cutter or a cookie cutter which shape like a lotus petal. Using two fingers, start pulling down the clay in this way. Okay, keeping a triangular shape. You can see there's a lot of clay on the top. We have to keep it as it is and pull the remaining down in this way. And now, 
using some talcum powder in your finger start smoothing the clay from all the sides Okay, once you got the layer as smooth, repeat a layer of talcum powder in the bottom of the clay in this way. And now finally, using a cutting tool, start cutting the leaf in shape of a lotus petal. So first I like to cut the top, give it a broad look and then I go with the sides to give it a sharp look smooth it from the inside also and here you have your petal for lotus so to let it get dry friends what i'm going to do is i'm going to place it on a cylindrical support like this and Place the bottom in this way. Okay, now let's make one more. Take some talcum powder in your fingers and then start pulling down the clay in this way. Once the sides are spread out enough, you can easily use your finger and smoothen all the lines and rough lines and bring it to a real petal shape. Now again, use some talcum powder and cut the edges of a petal. Now lift up the petal, place it in your hand and just give it a slight curving in this way. So you have again got a petal, keep it on hold in this way. So I'm going to do the same with all the petals and create the shape. Put it in your palm and then press it. So now we got perfect petal. In the same way, I'm going to make few more. So in the same way friends, I have made at least 12 petals for now. So now as they are getting to get dry, we will start placing them. So for that, first of all, I have taken a little bit of talcum powder in my base. Place a round ball of clay in this way. You have to use as many as tools you need for this. Be very smart and gentle while doing this part. Select the petals which are half dry as well as they are large in size. So these are the ones. So I'll start placing the petals from the largest. Give it a little bit of curve in this way. Now apply Fevicol at the back side and place the first petal. Okay, raise it if you want to raise it. And then using a tool, I'm going to mix the top of the petal clay with this clay. The same you can do from back side. Gently mix some of the part of the clay with the petal. So this will actually give quite support to the lotus. Just for support, I'm going to place a stick below the petal in this way this was our first petal let's select the second one now let's place the second one so add some fevicol on the back side place the petal on exact using the tool i'll fix it with the bottom clay in this way again add some glue and place the next petal Again, add glue and add one more petal. So now one by one start placing all the petals in the right direction.
till the clay gets dry completely it will always need some support so provide proper support before the clay gets dry completely okay so now friends till all the petals get dry you have to keep them high and maintain the shape the fabricable shilpakar clay takes about 90 minutes to get dry completely so that is the whole time you're going to get to mold this clay and do any kind of fixations so in this way friends i am going to provide some support on the bottom of each leaf one after another and give this lotus a rising up shape in this way so that it will look absolutely beautiful like a lotus let it get dry complete the rest of the part and then we will place the center okay now friends i have finally completed making my lotus and this is how it looks with all the petals completed only the center part is remaining so i'm going to do it at the last because i thought to give it a real lotus look by adding these pollens so i'm going to add this pollens and after that we are going to add the center top part so that will be something which we should do after coloring the complete lotus because that may affect our pollens so now friends we move on to our next part where i'm going to make a lotus leaf so for my base i'm going to use this kind of plastic so now friends i have finally completed making the lotus and all the petals have also got dried up in all i have placed almost 25 petals to make a big size of lotus and it itself may weigh about 250 grams so this is a bit heavy and i have also made the center in this way i have just simply shaped the clay in round and then made flat and a conical top from the back side in this and then i have also placed a few pollens on the back side with the help of fevicol you have to just stick 10 10 pollens each time let it get dry and then again stick the pollens in the alternate directions and in that way from the front you will get this kind of a beautiful center and friends do remember to make the holes so that you can place your incense stick in the center or in all the parts so this absolutely looks beautiful like a lotus center and while making it friends you always have to check whether it fits on your center part or not but do not stick it until and unless we complete our coloring part so this is how beautiful our clay lotus looks and this is finally completed so now friends we are going to start making the leaf so for my base i'm going to use this kind of a fiber plate you can also use a plastic plate whichever will stay longer select that type you can select a plain plate or any color plate that won't be a problem because we will be anyhow coloring it so now friends first of all you have to always measure the lotus with your plate that it fits perfectly according to the size of my lotus this is the size of plate i am going to need so i'm going to use this one so now Cut the clay in equal parts, you need, and then mix both the parts very well. So now, at the edge of plate, we're going to make this kind of design. I'm not going to make the whole leaf using clay because that would really take a lot and lot of clay and clay mixing. So I'm just going to trick it in this way. Just flat your clay, make a cylindrical piece like this, and piece by piece, we're going to paste it on the edge. When you place it on the edge, Pull some clay downwards so that you can give a good support on the top of it. And then finally attach it to the previous piece in this way and make the top part thin. Take some talcum powder in your fingers and just try to make this top thin part. You can also use a fabricol while placing the clay in this part. I do use it sometimes, I don't need it sometimes, it totally depends. Then smooth this part, which is from the inside, okay? As well as support the other part. You feel there is some extra pinch which is not going with your shape. You can cut the extra part in this way. 
just remember to keep the tip as pointy as needed this is how you have to make the edge of the plate which later on will become the leaf shape so let's continue doing this now in the same way i'm going to attach the next part i'm just going to use a little bit of fevicol on the edge in this way then place the clay and press it on the edge in this way each time use a little bit of fevicol in your finger to mix the clay with the plate so that it won't stick your fingers now using two fingers pressing the top of the clay and try to make it as thin as possible from the inside use some talcum powder and make the parts smooth in this way keep doing the parts as thin and with that you can start shaping them whether you want the leaf to fall inside like this or fall outside like this okay so in the same way friends i'm going to put all the clay on the edges and then show you how it looks okay so now friends i have finally completed doing the clay part from the sides and it really looks like a leaf and i have got the shape i wanted from the edges and this is just perfect but I want to make it look much more realistic so I'm going to do some detailing parts using clay that is making the veins of the leaves which will really make it look much more natural. So let me dust off some talcum powder over the plate and now let's do some detailing parts using the clay. Now friends my chunk of clay is ready so first of all we have to roll it in this way cut it in few different parts and start rolling the clay parts thin use some talcum powder if needed in this way as these are going to be the lotus veins so you need them to be thin try to keep the edge much more thin okay i think this much is enough i'll cut it from this part i'm going to cut it again from here okay so these are ready so now let's start placing them and make this plate look like a real leaf so what you have to do is you have to find a edge side like this which is much uplifted as compared to the other parts so this one is that part so i'm going to measure one third of the plate and then consider this as my center point so what you have to do i'm going to start from this part maybe then just draw a straight line which is coming to the edge of the leaf let me show you once again this is coming to the edge of the leaf then make one more line which is coming to the other edge in this way and this is where i'm going to make one more line in this part okay so this is how after every 30 degree you can just divide the lines so first of all i'm going to place a clay in this way just lift that clay and slightly tap it on the fevicol as the edges are sharp just let it make a cutting so i'll start placing it from the thin side so that i can make a final cut when i am at this part then again make a cutting at this part okay this is how you have to decide the strings now friends you may have observed that we have cut this small tiny parts so roll it again and try to make a very very thin line of it in this way let's make one or two more and now i'm going to divide the streams from here you have to do this only when you get a very big gap place it here and then a little bit of Y in this part and a little bit in this part as the edges are sharp it should completely look that the lines are submerging in the edges so at the end you can just give them a little bit of gentle press like this give it a gentle press like the clay is completely mixing up in the leaf this will give it a much more natural look and at the edges i do want 
both of them to just submerge and mix. Place one more like here and then finally you have to also press the edge so that it may get submerged in the ending of the clay okay so now here you can see this is how you have to build up the veins of the lotus leaf if it is a smaller line like this one i'm going to just make two veins bringing out of it and if it is a bigger line like this you can bring up two more from here and then divide it again in two more parts so i'm going to do the same complete it and then show you how does it looks okay so again i have rolled out some long strings in this way and now i'm going to start placing them from the side okay, so you can see there's one two three y shapes so i'm going to take the longest and the nest start placing it from the top it's not important that the spots have to be straight because there is nothing like that. It is very important that your edges get mixed up with the leaf. Just use a paintbrush and remove the extra fabricol. So now friends, I have finally completed making the vein part and this is how beautiful it looks when it has got dried up. So this is the leaf we have got for lotus. It absolutely looks beautiful with the clay work done completely. Now let's place the lotus. So this is the center of the lotus and here this is how beautiful it looks. This is quite a bigger size so you can easily place it at the center of your table. So now friends we are going to start the coloring part and for that first of all I am going to use a white acrylic color. Remove the center of the lotus. So using some white paint in your brush start coloring the plate first of all. Okay, so in the same way friends, I'm also going to color the leaf from the back side so that you won't be able to know that it was a plate. Now, in the same way friends, I will be coloring the lotus as white. Turn the lotus from each and every side for coloring. Do not leave a single visible part of clay. So in the same way friends, I'm going to complete it and then show you how does it looks. Okay? So now friends, I have finally completed coloring the lotus and the lotus leaf as white. So white is going to be my base color so that the rest of the coloring part I'm going to do will be uplifted. And for the center friends, I have colored it as yellow and this is how it looks. I did the coloring part twice and it is good and i have left the tip of this pollens as the color it was it was a light pink color so this is how perfect and beautiful the center part looks this is absolutely ready so we don't need to do any more coloring for this one so i'll keep it aside and now friends i'm going to show you a very very special technique for coloring uh, this kind of clay art which will really make it look realistic and for that friends we're going to use epoxy art resin so this is the part a of resin and this is the part b of hardener if you have watched my previous video resin art you'll clearly know how to use a resin so first of all i'm going to measure resin and i need at least 40 grams so i'm going to use 30 grams of resin and 10 grams of hardener as the mixing ratio of epoxy art resin is given 3 to 1 mixing ratio so first of all i'm going to use a cup check the measurement as zero and then pour 30 grams of hardener in my cup so now here friends i have got 39 grams of a resin so according to the calculation now i have to add 13 grams of hardener so be very careful while adding the hardener so this is the ratio so now I'm going to give it a very nice mix using the same ice cream stick as it is an auto bubble release formula so do not worry about the bubbles and give it a very nice mix for at least 10 minutes now friends I have finally completed mixing the resin so now I'm going to add some resin pigment and for that I'm using epoxy resin art pigment 
which is ultra white color these colors mix really very well with the resin and they are good coloring agent for this DIY if you don't have a poxy uh, resin pigment you can also use acrylic color instead of it now friends give it a very good mix till the whole pigment mix up very well in your resin and this is how pure white it should look my white color is mixed very well with the resin so now get ready to do the pouring part first of all i'll pour some resin on the lotus and try to cover it completely with white we will actually need to use a brush to do this part but be very careful friends resin doesn't go well with the brushes that brush will be just for one use if you're going to use it so in this way i'm going to apply resin to all the petals and make sure that you're wearing gloves when you're doing this part now let's turn the lotus just check whether the lotus is completely covered with resin or not do not keep any empty gaps and now friends after covering the complete lotus with resin i'm going to use my torch and blow the extra bubbles wherever i can see them okay i think this much is enough now friends we have to keep the lotus to get dry at a perfect place where there will be no dust or no hair cat hair like i have mickey and now friends lastly using the same paintbrush we are going to fill the white resin in the leaf add some more resin So now friends I have finally completed coloring the leaf and flower using the white resin and I have let it get dry for over a night and then this is how it looks when it has got dried up. It gives you a complete glass look finishing and a glaze like it. So now friends we are going to do the same process for the coloring part also and for that in my cup I have already mixed 10 grams of resin. And with that, I'm going to use uh, olive green color for my leaf part. Take olive green color. This is I'm using an acrylic color in my cup. And then give it a very good mix. I also think to add a little bit of fresh green. That would make the color I desire. Okay, give it a very good mix. And now friends, we have to start the coloring part from here. Let's just check whether the green color is proper or not. I guess I need to add some more of light green. Then let's test it again. And this time friends, you can also use a brush to give a complete finished look. Okay, I think the color is just perfect. Now friends, start adding the color to the edge of the leaf in this way and then using a brush, you can bring it down. Okay, so this is how you can easily color the lotus leaf. Start from the edges because anyhow the color from the edges will flow down. So you have to do that and later on we can add one more layer of green to show the depth of this part. So the same way friends, I'm going to color all the edges and then finally I'll show you how to do the center part, okay? Now friends, after coloring all the corners of the flower, I'm going to add some dark olive green in the center. So let's just mix it very well first. Pour it in just one part to check whether it is right or not. Okay, pour all of it and then just using the paintbrush, Try to mix a little bit with the light shades in this way. I think this is enough. Just move it a little bit in all the directions and it will take its own natural form. So now friends, I'll do just a little bit of torching to pop all the bubbles. 
so this is fine now we will let it get dry for at least 24 hours and then i'll show you how does it looks okay now friends after 24 hours uh, the raisin of the leaf has got dried up and this is how beautiful the leaf looks it absolutely looks like a real leaf with the beautiful veins and the depth is really clear and beautiful edges i was hoping the green color would have stayed more on the edges but once the resin is uh, dry that's all now we cannot do anything for it just consider it as natural or good as you wish so now friends i'm going to start coloring the lotus we have already done the center and that is all it needed in all it looks absolutely beautiful you can either keep the lotus as white like this but i was thinking to do some more coloring part to the lotus and i have viewed through lot many different types of lotus before starting the coloring and this time i have selected to color the lotus as the red lotus basically the red lotus is named after a story but the original color of the red lotus is a deep lusty pink color so i'm going to do it for this one and i'm going to just use the plain acrylic color for doing it because when we do use a resin we don't have any control over the flow and especially on this kind of three dimensional things you won't be able to control the resin so let's make it much more easy and just use the acrylic paint to color this lotus if you like to keep it white definitely do keep it white as it is in this way and you can definitely start using it but i'm just going to give it a quick color and then show you how does it look now friends i have taken some acrylic color in my palette so this is the yellow white pink 18 and crimson red color and this time i'm going to use a number nine brush so first of all i will be taking a yellow and add just a little bit of yellow in the base in this way i'm starting from the center so that that will be a bit easier Whenever you're painting, always try to keep a rough cloth with you as well as a glass full of clean water and a glass for washing your brush. Wash my brush, tap it clean. Now take some white color, add it with the yellow. Try do some tap tap mixing. Now finally start with the pink. I'm using a very little amount of water in my brush so that the color stays on the place where I'm placing it, wipe the excess color and now start mixing it with the white. To color a three dimensional thing is always difficult as compared to a two dimensional thing. As we are doing this, so you need to take a lot of precautions, part and different brushes. Now I have changed my brush to flat to do the shading part in this way. I need a lot of pink and I'm just using the tip of the brush to create this kind of standing lines that will make look the lotus much more natural okay now I'm going to take some more color and color the top as much more darker okay I think this leaf is fantastic so we are going to do the same with other leaves also add some pink color first then try shading a little bit with the help of your flat hair brush. Okay, I think it's enough for the bottom. Take the pink and start making that lines. I have made enough beautiful lines there. So take some extra pink in your brush and do the topping in this way. Okay. So this is how friends you have to color the leaves let's do it all of them the same some pink color first then start mixing it with the bottom colors in this way i'm just speeding up the process okay now it's time to add some more of the pink Okay, after you have done the pink color and let it get dry for at least few seconds so that when you're going to place the crimson red color, it will be very clear and popped up. So now I'm using some crimson red color in my brush 
and I'm just going to make few lines from the tips and edges in this way you can also do this part at the end when the coloring part will be complete and you will be able to get much better and finer brush strokes so friends finally this is how you have to do the coloring part each time make sure to wash your brush before you're using a new color and in the same way exactly the same way friends you have to also color the back side for example i'll show you this part maybe like use a little bit of white in the deeper sides you don't need to take more use some pink and color the petals as pink okay then again take some more pink and make that fine lines from all the sides okay i think it's looking fantastic in this way so now i will let it get dry for some time and then finally use a little bit of crimson red color on the edges so now friends as you can see when the petals start getting closer i think you should do the back side coloring first and then you can do the front side coloring so that you don't mess up your coloring part okay so i'm going to do the same i'll complete it as you know all the steps just do a layer of white just a tint of a little bit of white and yellow then do some shading with the pink let that layer get dry just a little bit and then start layering the colors from the top one step of pink then one more step of pink and then finally use just a little bit of crimson red and your coloring of petal will be ready so now friends i'm going to do the same color the complete flower myself because it is getting a bit difficult coloring it with all the angles in front of camera so i'll complete it and then show you how does it looks okay so now friends i have finally completed coloring the lotus and this is how beautiful our red lotus looks from all the sides i have done a shading from both the sides from back side as well as from inside the red lotus is a really my favorite it, which actually has a deep pink color a lusty pink so this is the color i have given to the lotus it really looks so realistic and one of the reason of it is the clear resin i have pour on the lotus when the coloring part got dry after 24 hours i have given one layer of clear resin so that it may act as a protective layer to my coloring part and i can use this beautiful lotus forever so we have also made our center and this is so beautiful and bright yellow let's place it inside the lotus in this way it fixes in any direction you want press it so that it may get fixed you can easily remove it whenever you want and now let me show you by placing both of them together and friends this is how beautiful our lotus looks when we place it on the leaf you can also pour some water in the leaf as well as you can also add water surrounding the leaf it really looks very beautiful and shiny the size of this decor is quite wide and beautiful so it is very graceful you can place it outdoors as well as indoors you can use it as a decor or as incense stick holder that is completely your choice but i'm going to use it as a center table decor as it goes with the indian look so nicely and this absolutely looks like a realistic lotus flower so friends please do give it a try make it yourself and do tell me in the comments below how did you like my videos friends and if you do like my videos please do like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching